This first technique I want to share with you is really simple and it's why it's one of my favorites. I'm just taking a Zig pen and my Awesome Star stencil. You're going to outline whatever stencil shape that you have on top of your cardstock and then you're just going to scribble inside of it. I mean, what could be easier and more fun than that, right? It doesn't sound like it's much, but when it's all done and you've got the cardstock completely covered, it has a really cool look to it. See, isn't that fun? It kind of gives it a messy punk kind of look. And I've used our little punk stamp set here, and I just love this little bear with the eye patch. I think he's so stinking adorable. And I just love the fun little critters on this set. And here you can see I've used them to create like a really beautiful rainbow card set. I'm a sucker for rainbows, you guys, so that's always gonna be my favorite. And then we have our coloring book backgrounds, and I've just put our little kitty in his little bunny hat on top. So I'm gonna show you another one. We're gonna be doing the same kind of thing. We're gonna use that Zig Pen to outline the stars more carefully. Now, I've taken some Copics here. I kinda wanna do a gradient going from blues to oranges to yellows. And then you're gonna go in and you're going to very carefully color these in, but you're gonna do it going from darkest to lightest. And then of course, I'm just showing you a small sample. You would want to fill up the entire page. So here you can see I've done just that and I've put a few little gray dots in between and I've used our Sassy Girl OMG stamp set. It's really fun and it's a great way to create paper that ties in with how you're gonna color the stamp. You can see here we've got two different gals on this stamp set. Now here she's in black and white, but I just wanna show you what they look like colored. They are so much fun to color, and you can see on the background I've used our comic book stencil, which is a really great stencil because it comes with two six by six stencils. One is a comic book sketch, the windows for a comic book scene, and then you have the patterns that you can put inside the windows. We've also included the negative space of the stencil, and I'm gonna show you a really fun technique using that. I'm gonna tape down my comic book window stencil with some masking tape here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the negative shape and I'm gonna put some sticky tape on the back and tape it down in the center. I'm gonna take some Distress Oxide ink in Twisted Citron, and I'm just gonna cover all around the outside of the square. Now I'm gonna tape down my pattern stencil and make sure that's nice and secure, and then I'm going to take Lucky Clover and I'm going to press it in. Not rub, but press, because I really wanna saturate it and get a really nice contrast in color. There you can see once it's all peeled off, you can make these beautiful frames and stamp whatever you want inside of it. Here are you can see with the comic book frame, you can just add tons of texture to the background. And then I've done the same thing here, only I've used some glitter gel paste, and I've used one of the girls from our Sassy Girls Own It stamp set. You get two really glamorous gals to color, and I just want you to see how pretty these are when they're colored. And they are so much fun because you get to put makeup on them, and I absolutely love that. It's so fun to do. Here I've done her makeup in our store colors and I've used our lipstick squiggle stencil. And speaking of lipstick squiggle stencil, I wanna show you a technique using it. We're gonna take some mustard seed distressed oxide ink and you're gonna rub it all over the back of your stencil. Then I'm going to be taking some spiced marmalade distressed oxide ink and I'm gonna rub that all over the bottom half of it. Now don't worry if you get some yellow on there, you can wipe that off with a baby wipe. Now I'm gonna take some water and I'm gonna spritz it very lightly. I'm gonna put that on top of a piece of tan cardstock and I'm gonna run it through my machine at least twice. I just want it to press down nice and firm and you can see here it creates this beautiful gradient of color. It makes a gorgeous backdrop for our Taco About It taco stamp set. And I wanted to show you a different sample using that same technique, but I've used my Girl Power stamp set and plopped her on the front of that card. These are three cute little girls with lots of fun sayings. Here's a great shaker card that I've made using the little girl with the headphones, which is so fun. It says, hey, stay weird, which is always a fun thing to put on a card to hand to a friend. Here you can see I've used three different stamp set using a masking technique. I've used Spring Friends, What's the Scoop, and then of course Girl Power to create this card. Let me show you one of my other favorite masking techniques. I'm gonna take some post-it tape and I've just got an A2 card here. I'm going to line it up in the bottom left-hand corner and spread that tape across. I'm gonna kinda of use that as my guide and then just go up and leave a tiny bit of the corner covered. And what I'm going to be doing is using our plushy dragon to stamp here to make it look like he's walking up that corner. 
So then I'm going to take that off and I'm going to use that corner again and line it up right underneath his feet. And I'm going to do the same thing up top using that as a guide. I'm going to bring it down so now both corners are exposed. So I'm going to be taking some broken china distressed oxide ink and I'm just going to cover both of those areas making sure they're really saturated. And then I'm going to come in with some blueprint sketch to add as an accent. So the way I'm going to do this is you're going to actually start on the tape because what we want to do is just barely put the darker blue ink just on the edge of it. You want to do it ever so lightly and then you're going to do that same thing on the corners as well. Make sure you use a light touch when doing this and then when you're done you're going to go back to that broken china and you're just going to go over it and blend those colors together so you get a really soft gradient. I'm going to be taking the heart stamp from the plushy dragon set and I'm just going to randomly stamp hearts with that blueprint sketch color. And then you can see the big reveal, which is always my favorite part. Look at how cute this turns out. It's a really fast and easy card and it makes a beautiful gradient. And then you can just color that dragon, add a sentiment, and you've got a card done in just minutes. Here's another one that we did with our plushy dragon with a little bit of watercolor like spritz behind it, which is kind of fun. And then this is my favorite. He is fully covered and he's even got rotating clouds going behind his little head. It is such a fun stamp set with all the cute little dragons and clouds. Let's go on to our next technique. First I'm going to tape down an A2 front and then I'm going to use some Lucky Clover Distress Ink and I'm just going to take that and really kind of randomly put it all over the card. There's no rhyme or reason to this, you just want to spread it everywhere and you want to make sure that you're pressing firmly so that way you're getting a lot of color on the cardstock. And the reason why is because you want to have a lot of ink on your cardstock for this technique. I'm going to take that blue print sketch, which is honestly, guys, one of my favorite colors. I absolutely love this blue. It's so vibrant and pretty. So you're going to do the same thing here. It's just going to be random. You're just going to spread it wherever you want and kind of add it so it's next to the colors and you're not going on top of the colors too much yet. I'm going to take broken china and I'm going to put it in all those little empty spots. We want to kind of have the colors in their own area so we can see the tone without them blending together. And then we're going to go back and go over this a second time. It's really important because you want it to be A, blended, and B, have lots of color. Okay, I'm going to take our heart stencil and some pixie spray, and then I'm going to place that down. Now, I found it to be sticky but not sticky enough, so I'm just going to add a little bit of tape to it to just make sure it's really secure and down. You can do this technique with any stencil. I just love when you use a really thin stencil like this one, when the pattern is really thin lines, it winds up being really delicate looking. You'll see in the finished product, if you use a thicker stencil, you're gonna definitely see more contrast between the dark and the light. But I love the really soft pattern that it gives the cardstock. So now I'm gonna take, I just have like a little spray bottle of water and I'm going to lightly mist this. You don't wanna to totally drench this, especially when you have a fine line stencil. And then I just have an old rag and I'm just gonna dab off the water. So I'm just gonna repeat that, doing it really lightly. I'm not going to use a lot of water or press hard. You can use more water if your stencil is thicker, but when you have a really thin stencil like this, like I said, you're gonna have very small lines. So you wanna make sure that you don't use a lot of water because otherwise the water can seep underneath and then your pattern just gets kind of washed away. So if I pull this up, you can see there's a tiny bit of water pulling and you're just gonna take a dry spot on your rag and just barely dab it and take that away. And it'll take away those darker spots without ruining your overall pattern. You can see how soft and pretty this is already. And when it dries, it will dry a little bit darker and you'll see more contrast in that pattern. Here's a card I made with it, completely dry it. And you can see it's just a really soft, pretty pattern. And I've just added our little sheep from our Spring Friends stamp set. You can see it's got a sheep and a bunny. And this little bird, you can tell he's well-loved in my stamp set, you guys. I just adore him. Here I've made this card using just the bird. I just think he's so cute. I just love using him. And then I've used all the elements on the stamp set for this card to create this fun little park scene with them. You can also see this as a full coloring video on our YouTube channel. 
Here's a layout I thought it would be fun to try. Since we're going to have photos going down this way, we're only gonna stamp on the side here. So I'm gonna use my Spring Friends stamp set again, and I'm gonna use the little flower to stamp the background. I'm gonna use Distress Oxide Scattered Straw for the ink that I'm going to use. And a great tip when making pattern paper with your stamps is you want to try and stamp kind of your stamp in a triangle pattern. So here I've created my first triangle right there. And now I'm gonna use the bottom two flowers to position my next flower and create another triangle. If you just keep repeating that triangular pattern, you'll have a pretty evenly dispersed stamps throughout your entire page. So here you can see I've completed it. I've left the right side of it empty because obviously we're gonna be putting our photos down on top of that. So I went ahead and I added a few more scraps of paper and I'm just gonna mat this blue paper onto my white cardstock. And I decided I wanted to do a pink paper on top of it, but that's I think another opportunity for us to add more stamps and some more pattern paper. So we're gonna do another tone on tone. We're gonna use Distress Oxide uh, Worn Lipstick and I'm just gonna use the Butterfly Stamp to create another pattern paper. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did here before, guys. Just use that triangular pattern to cover your paper and it'll help evenly disperse your stamps. So here's my finished piece of paper. And again, I didn't do anything down the right side because we're gonna be putting photos on top of that. So you don't need to worry about covering the entire paper when you have something going over it. I've added a fun little printed title here. It just says Spring Decorating. And then I've got a white border I'm gonna put across here. And I think this is another great opportunity for us to do another fun technique using stamps. And this time what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna use that craft piece of paper and we're gonna go right on top of that white paper. But first, I think we're gonna add some fun to it. So I'm gonna be taking the flower, the bee, and the butterfly, and we're just gonna use some memento ink, and we're gonna stamp randomly all over this strip of paper all the way down. Be sure to fill up the entire strip of paper and make sure you also get those edges too. So I've just chosen four pastel colors of colored pencil, and I'm going to just lightly fill these in. Don't feel like you have to be like, excellent coloring here or super precise. This is just a fun pattern piece of paper and a way to bring in some color to the layout. So don't stress about making this perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna space out my colored pencil and make sure everything's colored. And I thought it might be kind of fun to use a gel pen to add some white dots. That's another way to bring in, you know, the white color since we have white cardstock on our layout. So there you can see I've placed my pattern paper and now I'm just gonna go ahead and throw down my photos. These are photos of my spring decorating, you guys. I'm kind of a decorating fanatic. I love to decorate for the holidays and I love changing out all my decor seasonally. Like if there's an excuse for a holiday, you know I'm decorating for it. It's just my jam and I totally love it. So now that my pictures are down, I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time on the fun elements, which is my favorite part. So here I've added plain white buttons and I'm taking these little epoxy dots and I'm just putting them on top of the buttonholes. I think it's a really fun way to add color and to change the way your buttons look. And if you put those little dots in the center of a really small or a very large button, it's really cool because they look different depending on their sizes. And I just love the way that they look. They look like custom embellishments that you couldn't get anywhere else. And it's kind of a fun and different way to add some texture to your layout. So I've stamped and colored my little bird and I added some foam tape to the back of him and I'm just gonna pop him on my layout. I also stamped and colored my little bunny. I think she's so cute. I just love her glasses. I'm kind of obsessed with them. They're so cute. So we're just gonna foam tape her and add her to the layout as well. And I had added some dark gray to her eyes to make her eyes really pop and stand out. And I forgot to do that to the bird, so I thought I'd go back and add that darkness there. You can always go back and use a darker tone, either dark gray or black, to their eyes. And then if you wanted to, you could add a white gel pen dot to make a little highlight in their eyes, and that always kind of brings it together. 
So now that my layout was complete, I felt like it needed maybe some more of these little epoxy dots. So I went ahead and added a few more of those to the layout. And you can see here, now that it's completed, you guys, it feels so good to make an entire layout and you've created the pattern paper, the embellishments. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend trying it because it is so satisfying to see this beautiful creation. For this next technique, I'm gonna use a piece of great cardstock and a star stamp from our plushy sleepy lamb set. I'm gonna use Versamark ink and I'm gonna stamp the entire piece of cardstock. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to be using some hot pink embossing powder and I'm just gonna spread that all over. And I like to really put a ton on to make sure it's fully covered and I just shape off the excess and put it back into my box. So. It's heat set, it's on my card front, and I've put my little sleepy lamb here and I've just foam taped and put him on the front. And here's the fun technique I wanna show you. You don't always have to color an image. Just take an acrylic block and one color, which is hot pink, and I, you take your colorless blender and just add tiny elements of color. So this is a great way to make a monochromatic card using one color scheme. We're just using pink here. And all we've done is use the colorless blender to add a touch of pink, and there you have a finished card. Here's our cute little sleepy lamb set, and you can see here he is colored. He's really an adorable little set. I just know you'll love him. For our next sample, we are going to be spraying alcohol ink on a piece of photo paper, and we're gonna take some alcohol inks and just drop it on. Now I've added the spray the alcohol spray I've used quite a bit so I really want it saturated and I'm gonna add the blue and I'm gonna add a little bit of green and you can choose whatever colors you want here it doesn't really matter in the end you're not gonna see a lot of these colors you're just gonna see a hint of them so I've also taken some black alcohol ink and I have put it in a sprayer now you're gonna spray all of that and it seems kind of crazy because you feel like I just covered it all up but then you're gonna go back with the alcohol spray and you're gonna keep spraying it over and over again. You're gonna be moving that black. And the idea is you wanna cover it with the color, the black spray, and then you wanna take the alcohol and spray to reveal the color underneath creating a galaxy. Once it's dry, you're gonna take some watered down white paint and you're just going to use the splatter technique to add your stars. And here you can see it completely dry. It creates a beautiful galaxy looking like you have these nebulas. So what I did is I went ahead and cut that into strips and then I just used my blast off stamp set to stamp and color these planets. And then on the bottom it just says, you mean the world to me. It's such a fun stamp set because you can stamp the little animal heads either in the rocket or in the astronaut suit. So here's a card I made with the pig in the rocket and then it's interactive. So if you tip it, he actually blasts off, which is, you know, totally fun. Here's a really great way to use an interactive card where you can spin the wheel and change the astronaut heads. So you can use just those two stamps to make many different animals. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna use the Ahoy Matey stamp set and this little crab. We're gonna be stamping with some Gina K black ink. Just gonna stamp him right in the center of my white cardstock. I wanna show you this really fun distress ink technique. So once you stamp him, the crab, or whatever stamp you have, you're gonna go ahead and use a mask. Now this mask I've used several times, so you'll see in the video, he peels up a little bit. Normally that doesn't happen, but I've used him probably four times. So it's probably time to make a new one. So I'm gonna use some tumbled glass uh, distress ink, not oxide, just regular, and you're gonna spread that down on the bottom. And what we're creating here is a ocean scene as though you're looking down on him and the waves are kind of washing up on the sand. So it's okay that his legs are exposed because he's gonna be standing in the water. So then I'm gonna take some tea dye ink and you're gonna spread that along the backside. Now you wanna make sure that you're rubbing a lot on there and getting saturated. And here's the most important part. You wanna make sure that brown bleeds into the blue. And then when you do, you wanna go back over that with the blue. You're gonna get kind of a greenish brownish color and that's great because the reason why is you want it to look like water washing over the sand. So you want that brown to kind of show through that light blue color. Now to create our sand texture, you're gonna be taking whatever pen you have on hand. I'm gonna use a Copic here and you're gonna create dots in different brown tones. Then you're gonna use a white gel to create just white squiggly lines along the blue edges. And then here you can see I've used a circle cut to cut it out and you can see I've colored the crab and it makes such a great beach texture. 
So our Ahoy Matey set also comes with a whale and a little dog. Here's our cute little pirate pug. I think he's so stinking cute. And then I've used the whale and the anchor and the crab in the stamp set to use on our coloring book background. Our coloring book backgrounds are available in our digital shop and basically they help you create backdrops for all of our stamps. So you can see there we have a skateboard park, we have a red pickup truck, and even a craft studio. Now I'm super excited to share with you our brand new release for July. This first stamp set is called Sweet as a Honey Bee. And you can see you can make dripping honey words and beautiful florals, and it even has beehives and a honeycomb pattern. We also sell a coordinating honeycomb stencil. This next stamp set is called Skeetosaurus, and it's got a totally cool skateboarding dinosaur and then it also comes with a t-shirt stamp and then the t-shirt is blank so you can stamp whatever you want on the t-shirt and then we've got a totally rocking dinosaur he is rocking out with his guitar and then also the stamp set has a coordinating skater stencil it's just a really fun and unique pattern this next stamp set is one of our sassy girls and it's sassy girls brave and you've got these two great, really patriotic images, and it's got lots of great words. And it also has a coordinating stencil called Victory. It's a perfect combination. I know you are totally gonna adore this Plushies Friendly Pugs. It is so cute. It's got this cute little stamp where he's tucking one of the little dogs in. And then here's a card using one of the dogs as flying. In the stamp set, it actually comes with two dogs in the plane, and the stamp itself has a ton of really great sentiments. This next stamp set is called Salty But Sweet, and it comes with this great crab and the shells and the flowers, but it also comes with this gorgeous mermaid. And on the background here, we've used the mermaid stencil and some foil, and she's just so beautiful on that foil background. And the sentiments are great because some of them are a little sweet and some of them are a little salty. This next stamp, Camping BFF, has this great sign, and you can stamp different themes on the sign like birthday, anniversary, and so on. And then it also comes with these great little campers, and we have this gorgeous tree stencil, so you can create these beautiful forest backdrops for this camping set. I love this next set, guys, because it's Sugar Rush. So it's full of sugary treats, and here is one of my favorites. It's a Sunday that I've colored in a 4th of July theme. Now imagine all the different Sundays you could make. I mean, how cute would that be for Christmas or Halloween? You could make so many cute treats with that. This next set is from our Thank Mew stamp set. Um, Mew as in kitty. It's got these great knitted elements like the flowers, the yarn ball, and that heart you just saw. And what's really great about it is the kitties are separate, so you can stamp them together or you can stamp them alone. So that ball is stamped in front of that kitty. So you can see here you've got two whole kitties and then a third kitty that you can put on top of the ball or the heart. You have lots of options with that. My last stamp to share with you is called Pardon My Frenchie. It's got these great little French bulldogs on it, and then it's got glasses that are separate, so you can stamp the glasses, but it also has ties and bouquets and flowers and things like that for the hair. It even comes with an adorable little dog in a bag. I hope you enjoyed that review of our July line, and I hope you enjoyed all the fun techniques that I got to showcase with you. Be sure to check out our website. We have new releases every single month, lots of fun, really exciting product that I think you'll love. And be sure to join us in social media because we'd love to join in with you and have lots of crafting fun.